Welcome to The First Turn. I'm your host, Hyena, and today, Lama and I talk about our first experiences with the 10th edition of 40k, and spoilers, we really like it. We also talk about the not Warhammer 40k preview coming up this weekend that covers the other major games from Games Workshop, including Age of Sigmar, Underworlds, Warcry, Old World, and Horus Heresy, and more. Enjoy. The uh, preview event. Finally, something not 40K related. Yep. I mean, not that I'm upset at 40K. It's a lot of fun right now, a lot of excitement. But you know, sp- sp- speaking of that, before we get into the preview, everyone who's been playing games in 10th edition is having a great time. That's what we keep hearing. No, I, I don't mean everyone in the world. Right, right. Everyone right. we've seen in person playing the games will say, this is the smoothest edition. Mm-hmm. This is the most fun I've been had in 40K in a long time. And even one of the most critical among us, mm-hmm. who doesn't make it a, a, a page into a book or a day into an edition without having problems, yeah. said, this might shave 40 to 60 minutes off of a yeah. game. Yeah. Like, And it wasn't because it's dumbed down simple. Right. It's like, these processes are designed to flow. Now, we aren't, as a group, playing the either broken good or broken bad things. Right, so we're not playing the unanimously agreed upon weakest faction in and the it's, game, and it's or the or the the strongest faction in the game. There's no one really playing Eldar. Yeah. yeah, and it's and we can start to make that determination based on the fact that where we did get oversimplified rules, in my opinion, like we talked about last week, was with the points. Mm-hmm. They came out very power level y mm-hmm. instead of uh, power rating y instead of like what we're used to seeing, and that immediately gave us some shock with some very powerful units being very cheap. Right. And we're not on that train yet. We're just trying stuff. Right. Well, like I had said, um, I, I wish there were, were like, and, and it's funny because every time I, I bring this up, right, as, in terms of balance, two different point costs for things, I get a lot of blank stares like, huh, I don't think that would work, kind of things. It's either a, a unit is balanced with a point value for its base loadout and then a point value for its fully upgraded loadout. I wish that was the two... The two modes, the two point costs we had for every every single unit. You can take zero upgrades if you want to. Here's the cost. But if you if you add one upgrade to a unit, you have to use the fully upgraded cost. Because there is a very big difference between a tactical marine squad with bolters and a tactical marine squad with all the special weapons and heavy weapons you're allowed to take, plus the sergeant having a power weapon and right. like, like everything decked out. There there is a power level between those yes. two things. And it's hard to say, eh, both of those things there's 75 points. It's like, excuse me, no, they're not. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. swap out a, a bolter for a missile launcher or a bolter for a, a Two melted gun. Or, yeah. Like, that's not the same power level of a unit. Right. And they should have different point values. Yep. If we're not going to go completely granular, where every single upgrade, every single thing has a points value associated, because how can you really assign that point value to the unit mm-hmm. or to that, that specific gun right. for its impact in the game. Like you, it's, that part is so difficult. I mean, we saw last edition they had different point values for melted guns on different units with different ballistic skills. We saw you know? in units that are never intended to really get in the fray, one of our uh, associates, friends, who uh, would play a very soup list yep. would get so granular that with guardsmen that he would bring in his imperial soup list, he was debating with four points to spare, mm-hmm. whether to keep one of the sergeants in one unit with a LAS pistol or a bolt pistol. Like, it got that. Yep. It's like, and how do you really balance that, and what impact does that have on the game when he sits 38 right. inches away from it, everything? Exactly. Like, And so some people think it's stripping the game of, of, of technicality or, or something like that, but or sure. flavor. And I could see it to a degree, but I think your point is valid. Some people do want a bare-bones unit, mm-hmm. and there is a great disparity in the output or potentially durability of you as soon as you add anything. And so they really probably should have two costs. Right. You're going to put stuff on them this, if you're not that. Right. Or if you're going to take what they come with. Yeah. And I think uh, one of our associates uh, didn't have a problem with that because I think there's a custodes unit that's broken down that way, sort of. Where he, where he said by the points it's got, or they had two separate... Um. Points cost for something. So I knew they did it for, like, numbers sometimes. Okay. Right? So, like, some units, like broadside battle suits. Normally, you would have, um, you know, you can bring five guys, you can bring ten guys. Well, broadsides are, are units of one, 
to three, but it's not, here's the cost for one, here's the cost for three. It's one, two, or three. They've got three different costs based on how many models you add to the Interesting. Unit. Uh, one of the custodian's units was, if you're bringing two, three, five, or six. Those, that, that those was are the, that was So it. there's, yeah, no, there's yeah. no four, but it was two, three, five, six. It's like, yeah. that's so bizarre, yeah. you know, that you, you point out the cost based on these numbers, but you... It isn't just a per model cost. It's basically what you're trying to do. You know, it, it was it was strange. Now, where are you on? And I promise we're not going to stay in 40k yeah. here, right? But now, where are you on in terms of the model count granularity? Now, me maybe coming from Sigmar, I prefer that the price for as far as the model count, not necessarily war gear, yeah. is for five or yeah. 10, I don't care about that at all. Is for five or ten? I, I'm I, fine with that. I don't need yep. them to say here's the cost for five and then one model more because I don't 23 want, points per model. It's like I don't care. I don't want a squad to be. Yep. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Like now, and then I heard it was funny. I heard the same argument for both sides. It was literally the exact same argument for for point and counterpoint. Yeah. And it was cool. You buy them in box unit size, so there's no models going to waste. Right. But then I heard it also as, um, well, great. Now if I lose one, I can't even play the unit because I don't have the box count. I've heard that argument for and against it. <laughs> so a unit you buy it in a box it comes with five guys you play all five right no yep. models get wasted because normally it would be like well I want to run seven guys so I have to buy two boxes of five right, I have enough points for seven yeah. yeah and there's three guys that don't see the table because I didn't have enough points to bring all all ten of them I'm going to have enough points for seven of them three models wasted so now it's like cool I don't have those wasted models anymore because I bring them in units of five yep. I bring them in you know in, in, in bo- yeah. blocks of five but then I literally heard the same thing. I was like, well, what happens if I buy those 10? I want to run 10 and I lose one. No, I have nine. I can't run a legal, I can't run a legal unit now. It's like, Jesus Christ. So you were, <laughs> you were playing squad sizes based on how many models you lost? You or, could fly. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I did do that one time <laughs> because I converted some of my crew into a, um, a kill team for a different skirmish game. Yeah. So I only had 17 of my 20 crew. So I was like, well, I can only run 17, I guess. And so I literally bought the unit of 17 because that's all the models I had. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't know if that if that argument of, well, if I lose one, holds as much weight as I, I know, but, I, but, it, but it's the same exact thing, yeah. right? It's like, well, I'm limited at five. If I have five, I can play them. If I don't, it, it's just, it's what a silly thing. It's like, it's, it's a perfect example of like, well, people are going to complain about anything. Yep. You know, no matter what. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, but it's like, for the most part, really like intent. Yep. Um, the new cards are coming out this weekend. Uh, I know a lot of folks printed their own cards, so they don't need them, and they already kind of the things. But the card packs, some of them are very valuable, some of them are not. <laughs> there were some, like, um, Votan, for example, has like eight cards in it. It's yeah. it's the smallest pack, uh, whereas Space Marine has like 120 of them. <laughs> yep. And it's it's like the same cost. Yeah. It's insane how, how Space Marine 120 card pack is 25 bucks, but so is... Um, like, uh, Tyranids are 25 bucks. Um, so are Necrons, I think. There was one army that only had like 10, 20 sheets and it was still $25. Like, it was generally they, they priced them based on how many cards are in there. Mm. So it, it scales from 15, 18, or Maybe 25. Um, but one of them was like, oof, that feels rough for 25 bucks. Whereas Space Marines just feels like a steal. Because it's this giant just stack. Yeah, just it, brick it's cards. like as thick of like a paper ream. Yeah. It's like a full paper ream thickness of, of, of cards. It's, yeah. it's nuts. Unfortunately, you wouldn't need to bring all of them to a game. And you may not even need to bring them for very long because that stack might be invalidated when codexes come out. Yeah. When new um, new packs come out with a different uh, uh, detachment and everything. So I, I think there's still value in that, you know, because you can play that detachment even when a new one comes out that might be right. different or better. But this one doesn't go away. This one's elite, you know, kind of a detachment ability plus their artifacts, you know, whatever, doesn't disappear. You can still yep. use it. Yep. So it still may be valuable once the data sheets get updated further down the road. Yeah. So I, I don't feel bad about getting one. No, oh, and they uh, and and I know that that Tyranids, like you with Space Marines, that's one of the first books coming. Yep. And they do have index cards right now, which I have the digital version. Maybe the paper version will be nice, so I don't have to keep opening the phone. But it does sound like when their codex drops in the autumn, there might be data sheets that are immediately changed. Right. So that's whatever. I mean, we'll we know it's going to happen. We yeah. know it. 
the the new um, Death Leaper model is is a perfect example of where they're absolutely going to change the yes, data sheet. Yes, they are. <laughs> like you we know we will. know that already. That is that, you know he'll that have example. cool new abilities and yeah, yeah. won't be as, as so generic as he was yeah. right now. But forty k aside, forty k aside, <laughs> we got a preview event for all the other stuff. Yeah, coming. So and it was pretty much everything not forty k. They call it the not forty k preview event because it is of course heresy. It is. Uh, Underworlds, Warcry, AOS, and Old they, World. Old World. Yeah. So four fantasy, one Horus Heresy. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe they were going to include um, Necromunda in there because maybe I, I didn't see it. Now, now that you mentioned, it, I did not see it on the on the card. But that's another one where I wouldn't mind if they got some more stuff because you know Necromunda stuff is kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, especially the terrain and and like one off characters, things like that. Yeah, it's those five. Yeah. Um, but we've got a couple of teasers so far uh, yeah. from preview posts on social media and things like that. Um, based on timelines, we've got some speculations and some guesses, I think, that we could make. Yep. Uh, and I would like to go on the record and actually make some predictions of what we think we're going to see okay. at 8 a.m. on Saturday, July 1st. <laughs> is, that, is that the right time? And it's 2 p.m. Uh B M T B S T G S which is GMT I think yeah but uh, UK time <laughs> yeah and so we're five six hours behind. for Eastern yeah yeah so six hours so we're Central time so we're six uh, eight, eight a.m. so don't have to wake up that early to yeah. get it uh, which which is nice make yeah. yourself some cinnamon rolls get ready for preview event. cup of coffee <laughs> yep and so they they list them Age of Sigmar Horus Heresy Warcry Underworlds the Old World um, so with the exception of Horus Heresy all things fantasy yeah. I, I think it's interesting, because with four fantasy games being uh, on the slate, um, there could be a lot of crossover and a lot of multi, yeah. uh, a multi-faceted release going on, right? So, for example, if they did a unit that was in Old World and in AOS and was an Underworld thing, like, you could have... You can have one unit be for multiple games. And we've always talked about that, is if you have a limited release window, a limited production time, limited design time, making something that works in multiple systems, not a bad idea. Yep. We like to see it, especially when it comes to, like, Warcry units, right? Yeah. If a Warcry unit, well, like we see with Lizardmen, those new uh, Chameleon Skanks replace the old Chameleon Skanks. The Hunters of Huanshi. Yeah. Uh, they replaced Chameleon Skanks. They stopped making those models, those old metal models. They stopped selling those. They don't have a data sheet anymore. Now it's the Hunters of Huanchi, which are ex- basically Chameleon Skanks. Yep. Right? That was a War Cry release. We hadn't seen that really happen for a while because it's always been a- in addition to the things they had before. Right? Here's right. here's a unit. Here's, here's basically Marauders, but new Marauders were keeping old Marauders. Yeah. Right? This one was the first example of them actually strip re- replacing a unit in the new book. So we could still see that. Could. Uh, you know, especially for, for armies that have old models that need to be updated, right? I don't know of too many armies that are still in that boat. Uh-huh. There? Yeah, there are quite a few. There are quite a few. But let's, if we're going to go down the list here, I'm going to get Horus Heresy out of the way. Okay. Because I think that maybe for us two is maybe one we're less interested in. Yep. But I don't even know what to expect there now because they keep... They did a plastic knight lancer thing that yep. I didn't expect. Sure did. I'm sure. I don't know. I still keep thinking it'll be a big tank, but I don't know if this will be the event they preview it. Um, it's what's interesting to me is how how much less hype I have for Horus Heresy releases now. Yeah. Because so much Horus Heresy stuff has been um, retired to just Horus Heresy. Yep. And it's not usable in 40k. Well, you celebrate that. By saying, well, now there aren't these broken things in, in that 40K. Crossover, yeah. That crossover, yeah. Uh, it also means that it's like, well, what what use is a Horus Heresy thing if I can't use it in 40K? I don't play, Cause, cause, I don't play Horus Heresy, so it's like, are, I don't care. While there are know? a a loyal contingent of Heresy mm-hmm. players, I'm sure you know a lot of people who bought those models when they were put in plastic especially. Right. Were 40k players. They yeah. they wanted to use that cool thing. Now, I and can you can see, still do that. I, I can see proxying some exactly. sort of things. You can uh, still uh, count as a, a brutalist dreadnought could absolutely be a siege, you know, claw leviathan. Yep. Whatever, like that. All that works. That's fine. But it's like, okay, well, you lost your anything that didn't have a a, a crossover um, that, that can reliably be a thing. You've lost that ability to use that model you've bought, mm-hmm. right? Like a Derrideo. What would that be in 40k? I have yep. no clue. 
Yeah. Nothing fits. So nope. it's just, that's a model you can't use. Or any, like, the tanks that are specific patterns for horror you can't All use. the Sakarin pattern ones. And right. Yeah. So, so what do you think they're actually going to show? Um, I don't think we're going to get our, our second re-sculpted Primark. Okay. I don't. No new Primark? I, okay. I, I don't think it'll be a reveal big enough to be something like the Emperor to be in a, <laughs> in a dual yep. base. So I, I think it might just end up another chapter's, like, generic heroes or, or more generic heroes we don't have. Okay. I just don't expect something big. Maybe I don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, but otherwise, we'll, we'll, for the third time... Maybe, I, maybe the, I had an idea. Because I was okay. thinking of jet bikes, right? Okay. They have plastic jet bikes. Yep. They never came out with, like, the plastic, um, what do they call it, um... Lancer or something speeder? Not the Lancer speeder. That's the the newest one. There's a speeder, javelin speeders. They haven't done that one in plastic yet. They haven't. So I could see maybe something a like that. It's a small unit plastic vehicle. Um, it's nothing. It's nothing too big. We don't have it yet. Javelins. Maybe because they look like bumper cars. You know the ones. They, about? Yes, they do. Yeah. They I even want to put a, a ten foot antenna. <laughs> <Yeah. on. laughs> that would be really fun. Electric sports. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like a javelin uh, land speeder. Yep. Something like that. Uh, or they'll release a book for no reason that people have to buy. Yeah. But um, uh, let's move here to the old world. Okay. Uh, the old world. So based on the last thing, yeah. I expect we'll see an update to the map. Okay. We'll get a fluff blurb about something happening in some faction, right? Mm-hmm. I think it might be similar to the last one. We'll see a new hero. We'll see some old stuff repainted. I think we're going to see a new Tomb King... Because that's the other side of the box. Yep. It's going to be Bretonnias versus Tomb Kings. Yep. I think we'll probably see a Tomb King in plastic. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, a Tomb King in resin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for Horus, or for, oh, geez, for um, the, old uh, the Old World. world. Uh, and then we'll see repainted Ushabti or right. uh, Necrosphinx or, or something like or, that. Or it, Tomb it, Guard, like, that are in plastic already. Yeah. Right. I think we'll see something like that. Um, my hope is to see something new. A new faction that they're going to do because i mean we we had the ideas of, of something for kislev potentially being in the game we had the ideas of Cathay. Um, Cathay or one of those kinds of other human factions that aren't empire yeah or aren't, aren't bretonia being in the game maybe we'll see something i think that's a long shot yeah i think it's going to be more of the uh, the, the tomb kings half of the okay of the yeah because um, they they did show off uh, a paint scheme for Bretonnia that's going to be sort of one of the leaders in the storytelling yeah. side of it. Or maybe it'll be a Necrotech. Because they do have a, a relatively new plastic Tomb King on foot already. Okay. So they they, they have one where he's, he is in plastic, he's in a clam pack, he's got his foot kind of up yep. on, a, on a rock. That one's kind of new. Um, you had an older one in, in resin that I think you could still get at the same time. And then there's the one that's in on the top of the um, War Sphinx, I think, has one in plastic, because that's a plastic kit. So, I don't know. It's, that's I a maybe. Su- I wouldn't be surprised, then, of a Necrotect or a Prince. Or a, um, or one of the priests, right. the wizards. Yeah. Something uh, like on, that. On foot, mm-hmm. right? And then show off a paint scheme. Yep. Of some dynasty, even though theirs are largely unchanged. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that. But that's. But I don't think we're going to see much. And I think again, we'll see a zoomed in part of some map area yep. and a story. Um, and I, I could be wrong. It could be something like here's a whole fleet of new stuff we didn't mm-hmm. anticipate. But I just don't. I just don't feel like this because this preview event was announced rather randomly. Yeah. Well, the fact that they're also doing five games, five different games in one preview means that they're not going to spend a lot of time. Either on all of them, or they're going to spend a lot of time on one of them, and four of them are going to get like a little bit, yeah. like tiny, tiny thing. And so let's circle here to Underworlds. Yep. Now we have almost never predicted this game no. correctly. It could be anything because it's literally could be anything in a little faction box. Yep. Or a two-player. So thing last time it was out. ghosts. We had no idea of ghosts. Yep. We're going to get an update, right? Now are we are we getting to a new season here? I have to assume they've had like six or eight war bands come out, so they have to come out with a new season soon. So I'm going to say an ogre warband. Another ogre. Okay. Wait, did we have another one recently? So there's the there's the the guy with the crossbow, and then there is the the pirate uh, one with the gun. The pirate the, one with the gun. Yeah, oh, those are the two. No, ogre this ones. will actually be just an ogre faction. You know what I'd like to see? I want to see three man eaters. There you go. That'll be your way to get into man eaters in plastic. Because right now they're single man eaters in resin. Awful. Awful. 
Uh, I want to see three man eaters in a unit. But they might not do that. They might, they might do like or a new gorger in plastic would be fine. Um, do the feral a, side a, one. A, a gorger and the little griblies that are riding on King Broad. Yep, something like that. You know, something or so like something like that, right? Uh, okay. I, I think the man eaters are more likely for like a war cry kind of thing, honestly, because that's where they would pop up, right? Or, Mercenary ogres going to, or I'll pick uh, bone splitters. Okay. Kanan's Reapers was not too long ago, but sure. Yeah. See, I don't even know. I know. <laughs> and it could be anything. <laughs> I know. Because uh, we had we had the most recent one was, was Stormcast and Zeech. Yeah. Those two weird ones. And then Very the ghosts. Very weird ones. Yeah. And the ghosts. So, and then... Uh, uh, I would not be surprised seeing um, in a new war band for, like, Cities of Sigmar. But, but see, that might be a Warcry thing as well. Tease in the build-up. You which, know? that's the next game I was going to yeah. get to, is, is Warcry. Yeah. Um, well, those... I find the Warcry releases to be... Almost more significant. Yeah. The Underworlds ones are neat, and they usually give them Sigmar rules, but the, they're little packages of characters, very unique to that game. Wish I was a little more into that you game. You can't spam them. You can't have multiples. Right. Like The Warcry ones, they're usually releasing stuff that's just a straight-up like chaff unit yeah. that can be used in Age of Sigmar. And I think that's been a great crossover. Mm-hmm. So Warcry, we have... I don't know if anything new is coming from soon, like as a two-player thing goes. <laughs> Uh, we had one release already, which was the weird feral, um, remember the baboon hound? <laughs> yep. And the Stormcast <laughs> questing knights. We yep. had, we yep, had yep. that already. I don't think we've had teasers of anything else. Uh, however, okay. there have been a couple of social media posts leading up to this event. And even some of the rumor engine things that yeah. maybe yeah. you think. So we had a, we have a three day and a two day to go kind of alert uh, the three day to go was definitely a, a, a manhole cover in the the realms of uh, the mortal realms, right? Because it had the Sigmar lightning bolt kind of star yep. on the manhole cover, plus a bell, and then in the shadow there was a Skaven symbol. That triangle, yeah, yeah the Skaven triangle. So, like, I, and when I saw, it, I was like, oh, don't, don't, don't play with my heart. So either they're going to make a version of Warcry that's like Mordheim. Right. Or something. Oh, could you imagine? Where there's some city fight terrain. Oof. Or, finally, finally, mm-hmm. Skaven might be getting something new. Right. Well, so what I was hoping... So let's stick to Warcry here. What do you so think? So for Warcry, I would not be surprised if we had a warband of Cities of Sigmar coming out for it. I would not be surprised if we saw a warband for Skaven. Even come in there. They haven't had a Warcry one, have nope, they? No, they have not. Oh. Not a single Warcry one. Um, they might be one of the only factions that has not had a Warcry specific yeah. warband. Um, Chaos has gotten uh, Fire a Slayers hasn't, I guess. Um, what are those going to be? Naked Dwarves? Yeah, more, dra- more <laughs> Naked Dwarves. Yep. Uh, less Naked Dwarves. They've actually got, like, some clothes on. Yep. I don't know. Ruck sacks. Um, we haven't seen an Eidneth Warband for Warcry, we haven't seen basically elves. A lot of elves we haven't seen in Warcry yet. We had uh, the Daughters of Cain one. I think that was might have been one of the only ones. But the, the manhole cover, yeah, and the the Skaven symbol was not to be mistaken for anything else. Right. There was no mistaking that. Yep. It was like seeing a bad moon and, and claiming it's anything but orc or goblin. And like, and and so maybe for Warcry that would make sense. A two bo- two player box because that's the way a lot of these Warcry ones come out. Sure, humans, Skaven. Yep, there you I go. would love that. But then I was thinking, well, that, that could also just be the straight up Cities of Sigmar release. Could just be Skaven. Because I was joking about that. Um, maybe I was thinking about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how, how, how completely fitting would it be that if this new campaign that's coming out this summer for Age of Sigmar, mm-hmm. which is going to be uh, uh, revolving around two different Dawnbringer Crusades venturing forth to start a new city, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the campaign. It's, uh, you know, a, a group sets off in uh, the realm of fire, a group sets off in the realm of life. They already said one's going to fail, one's going to succeed. They've already told us spoilers. Okay. One's going to fail, one's going to be successful. Uh, but then here's these four regiments of renown for the start of it that are like factions involved in this new campaign. It was it was uh, Nurgle. Yep. It was Fire Slayers. Yep. It was... Um, uh, Flesh Eater Quartz, and then it was there, uh, it was it was the Gloom Spike Gets. Yeah, Gloom had the head of like the guy wearing yep, the, yep. the giant squid skull. So it was those four were the groups that could be involved in this campaign. None of which, by the way, were the humans. Yeah, 
which was which was a little bizarre, right? <laughs> like <laughs> humans didn't actually have a, a venture have to start those? a city, but they're uh, not involved. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking that these four are going to be involved in the story somehow, but but it isn't. But it's all going to be about cities of Sigmar. I thought how funny it would be if with all the build up of the humans going out and these four groups maybe inter- interfering or interacting with the humans starting start a new settlement, if the ultimate bad guy who, th- who either foils the whole the whole thing or, like, makes a succeed or whatever is the Skaven. Because every single major story in fantasy boils down to the Skaven foiling it, <laughs> ruining it. <laughs> yep. every, like, all of them. Like, Nagash's Necroquake, foiled by the Skaven. The weird, like, comet in the moon from, like, Total War. Yep. Skaven. Um, the, the, the assassination of Nagash during, like, the ancient times. Skaven. Yep. Like, it's always the Skaven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they interfere too much. I think it'd be hilarious if that's what was going on here. But, but it could be fitting for either, right? Either setting. Warcry. What if, what if the tomb ships of, of the Lizardmen were, f- like, powered by some mysterious, uh, green rock... Green stone that warp created stone, yeah. and, and warp stone is reintroduced back into the game, and the Skaven yep. love that shit. Yeah, you know, like maybe that's what the tomb ships run on. They're going and digging, looking for it, or whatever they're running on. The Skaven you know? decide they're interested yeah, in it. Yeah, exactly. So I could totally see the Skaven out there doing that. I can see the humans being out there doing that because they're venturing forth. And wherever the humans are, are laying the foundations of or rebuilding some old city. Skaven were there underground already, right. or tracked them by being underground. Right. Or they, you know, when the city was abandoned, the Skaven are like, well, we'll move into these tunnels. Yep. No problem. I mean, they showed that kind of thing off in um, one of the Hammer and Bolter things with, uh, in Hammer Hall. Yep. There were Skaven in the sewers. It wasn't the scariest thing down there, but like, I mean, because there was a vampire just straight up living underneath Hammer Hall, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> converting people into vampires. Yeah. But like, it was a scary thing that there were just hordes of Skaven. A couple of stories below. The streets that people were living in. Yep. So, Skaven are everywhere. Um, but then there could also be a new Skaven Warband for under, or, you know, Warcry, whatever. Anyway. It could be one for Warcry. Yeah. And I don't know if they'll double dip, but it right. would be great yeah. if for Age of Sigmar proper, I mean, they finally got something. I mean, if it was replacing uh, Gutter Runners. Yeah. You know, like, it's a Skaven Warband for, uh, for Clan Eshin that's for Warcry. This gives you new Gutter Runners and new Night Runners for... Even if they give them a new name, whatever. It'd be fine. Yep. Because that's the only faction they seem to like giving updates to, right, is Clan Eshin. Yep. So, maybe... They like their Assassin's you know, that'd be that'd be fine. Um, whatever, we'll see. Uh, but I, I expect to see more of Dawnbreaker Crusade for AOS. Yep. Maybe even a more concrete, like, here's the whole army, here's the army box that they're going to start with. Similar to how right, Slaves right. of Darkness had their their box of Lumineth new, new and chosen. Them, yeah. Here's the here's the cover of the book that is with it. Here's a new artillery piece. Yep. Whatever. I mean, they have the ogre with the guy on the pole. Uh, maybe that's, that's a new, weird one. That's the, maybe that's their new artillery piece. But uh, I would not be surprised if there was a starter box that was like, here's twenty infantry on foot. Here's your five horses. Yep. Here's an ogre with a cannon on his back, and here's your character with his uh, his his squire. Yep. That was like the starter box. You know, like I think we've probably seen the starter box so far. That's everything that we've seen. Yeah. You know, um, so we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do expect either that or um, more of the campaign. Maybe what the first book or the next book looks like, and then the next model release. Because um, we're supposed to get like eight more uh, reveals for yeah. for this campaign, where eight eight other factions are going to get new models. Or maybe is it seven now? Had the four we listed off plus the uh, the the battle boar for the iron jaws are huge jaws. boar yeah so and they they said twelve they said like twelve factions 12 were getting like models we yeah. know of five so yeah. we'll probably see maybe one more really reveal for that we'll see okay yeah, so there you so go Dawnbringer Crusade mm-hmm. maybe more about the starter box mm-hmm. reveal one or two more things and then with everything we've seen say here's all you get in your first thing along with an early thing with the book yeah okay that's not crazy exciting but yeah, I know. But these types of preview events, we have to like Turn where it's back. not Warhammer Fest, where it's not Adepticon. Exactly. You gotta like. We do have back. Gen Con coming up here in a month. We'll probably see some more stuff around that. You know, we don't know if a preview event happening, at, but they didn't do a preview event last year. Correct, but they showed off stuff last they year did around show off that stuff. time. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. So final predictions. What do you think? Do you think? Do you think the Darmbringer box? I think we might see that, or or at least we're. I mean, you're. 
I didn't think of it the way you just did, but that's correct. Like everything we've seen first, mm-hmm. which could include something we see on Saturday, would be a part of the starter box. Maybe there'll be one other kit still, but maybe ten infantry on foot with with shields. We'll see a ranged unit that had those little like cannon, those tiny cannons on a stick for a ranged unit for their you know hand gunners. Yep. We're gonna see the character with his retinue. Maybe we'll see like a new battle mage. Skull. I was going to say two characters are usually kind of a be thing. Nice. A new yeah. battle mage would be nice. Um, and then I think we're going to see the five... Like, what cap- if they don't have mages? The, the knights. They're going to have mages. The gods, too. What or if they do something well, else? Bring a warrior priest, then. Oh, well, that'd be... Yeah. That, that, bring the Sigmar a, priest? Bring the warrior common. priest. Yeah. Like, no. But some kind of a support character, I think. Plus the five cavalry, and then and then some kind of bigger thing, whether it's an artillery, you know, the, the, the ogre, yep. or maybe it will be a, the cannon... The Iron Mold Cannon's coming back. What do we think you that know? Spider-Bot will eventually make an appearance? What Spider-Bot? That's been in... Eh, we're never going to see it. That's in, been in two nah. cartoons. Nah, we're never going to see it. Never. No. Because it's basically a steam tank with legs, is kind of how it is. In uh, in Hammer and Bolter, when they did the Dark Oath episode, that one looked like a Spider-Bot too, but it ended up looking more like a terrain piece. Like it was a, it was like a tower. It was like a yep. Warcraft tower. Yep. You know, with a cannon at the top. Um, I don't think we're going to see I think it's too and big. Then in, and then in Black Talon, we, yeah. we saw one marching we, we to war. Yep. Uh, we also saw in that, uh, of note, we also saw Demigriff Knights. Yep. So they confirmed they're still around. Gotta be. And they saw, uh, we saw like a different like Halberd infantry unit, which yep. may or may not confirm what the, the, the human faction will receive. Because they didn't look, they didn't look like anything, they, they were more Sigmarized lightning bolts, yeah. things like that, than other Empire Infantry we've yep. seen before, you know, so it, it felt very much like a new thing. Maybe it was just art. Maybe yep. not. Yep. Maybe we'll actually see it on the tabletop. That would be cool. To see. That would be like if they were basing some yep. of that art direction on ideas they've already got. But we also saw the 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 day the two days ago preview looked like a a war cry symbol for like one of the chaos war bands yeah. on the shield. Yeah. Plus a couple of axes, one with an angry face on it. Who knows what that symbol is? Yeah. It didn't look orcish to me. It didn't look you know, squiggy. I don't know what that face looked like. No. And but, it could just be random. But, but it like, was just like, it was like beaten iron, you know, axe. Like it was, it was made by someone who knows what they're doing, but didn't have the good, like the best materials to make an axe out of. <laughs> which, which to me just screams, um, Dark Oath. You know, like in addition to the shield was a classic, like, you know, marauder shield yep. with the, with the, the symbol of Warcry on it. Like, and they can obviously endlessly mm. release Dark Oath stuff yeah. for Warcry. I just always am going to say they just need to replace the whole Marauder line. And, they do. And Age of Sigmar. We've and got plenty them, of cultists that can just Dark Oath. replace them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, especially like the... Um, just call the, the most barbarian-looking ones the Dark Marauders. Earth, the Dark Earth Savagers. Yeah. That unit, you know? Yep. They're basically Marauders. Yep. They'll be fine. Um, but so it's like, well, we didn't talk about them at all. Maybe they'll get the Underworld Warband, because I don't think... Slaves of Darkness have gotten one at oh, all, uh, ever. Yeah, they have uh, the 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 woman who leads oh, them. Oh, Kagra. Yeah, yeah Kagra's Ravagers. They That's one. right. The wizard plus the three the three warriors. But none of these versions okay. have one. I don't think. Right? Did they have any other? Oh, they did. They had the um the one from the Beast Wilds. The three the unit of three. The one with like the predator mask. Remember the wooden predator mask? That wasn't Underworlds. That was Underworlds. Or, yeah. Yeah, that was Underworld. Yeah, okay. and, he, and like the big guy with the two-handed yep, yep, hammer, yep. the big ball guy. So that was Underworld. That was actually not too long ago. That's true. I still have mine on Spru. Oh shit! Chosen though, no chosen. In, no. in Underworld. So it, it could be, uh, hmm. Hmm. could be another Darko thing for Warcry. Because uh, I just don't feel like slaves are going to get a new unit in Age of Sigmar anytime soon. Right. Um, but but you're right. That shield and those axes really didn't feel like they could be anything else. Yeah. So that might have been a War Cry teaser or something. Or hell, that could yeah. No, it looked like War Cry to me. No, I was gonna say that could have been Old World. Maybe they're doing like Chaos Marauders in Old World. I'd be okay with that because then I could use those models in AOS for new Marauders. If yeah, they were on your uh, skull. Yeah, you know. But but I think they'll look very War Cry. Yeah. Hmm. Tough one. We might see another thing tomorrow yeah. on a countdown. Yeah, I look for. I'm sure they will. One day to go, they'll probably yeah. another one. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really holding my breath for, for a, a Skaven update of some kind. And I hope, I'll say this, I hope we don't see it in the first four things they show. Yeah. Because I feel I like they're going to go through every other game first and Age of Sigmar yeah. might be last. Yeah. And then... 
I hope it's a complete blowout, and it is, here's the two-player starter box for Cities of Sigmar, all that stuff, plus a new Skaven sculpted plastic half. Yeah. That's all new models. New, here's here's new gutter runners, here's new, here's a new warlord. Here's, but will they do that to steal no. the thunder from the cities? I think it'd be okay. Well, yeah, it would be okay. <laughs> mostly because I want uh, an, an, ultra, both, anyway. I want an yeah. ultra value box where yeah. I want both halves. Because so many times when I get a box recently, especially, yeah. I only want half the box. Yep. <laughs> and the other half just goes uh, goes on the pile unassembled somewhere. And it's like I go through my stuff and I'm looking. I'm like, holy crap. Here's like 400, 500 points of this army I don't play unassembled in yeah. a box. You know, Although you could use that for combat patrol. Now. I know. Yes, um, I could. Yes, I could. I so I wouldn't be surprised if they do show off Skaven getting plastics as half of some box set somewhere. Mm-hmm. But I just don't know if they'll do two brand new armies against each other in it like that. Well, one's on a new, a new army. No, it's just, it's just updates. No, the other one's brand new. Yes, but that's but I think the brand new army mm-hmm. is what they want to feature if they're going to feature it. I'm aware. Um, but look at look at tenth edition loss of forty k. Everything, everything Tyranids was new. Everything Space Rangers everything was new. Everything both was new. Neither of those armies were new. No. But what if one of them was? Mm. And then you... Like, if it would have been Crud, you know, some... Br- or, or like the Votan one. If, right. If Votan came in a, in a two-player box... If they would have come out in a two-player instead of getting their own. Yeah. I think cities will get their own box at some point. Okay. But the Skaven symbol to me, if it's going to be the AOS release, mm-hmm. I could see them in a two-player box or a campaign box or whatever they're doing. But that's my hope, is that it's that, and they're getting, like, four or five new kits. Because you know what I would hate to see? A new box comes out, and the Skaven half of it is just a Grey Seer on foot, the one we already have. Uh, 20 Clan Rats, which we already have. The, the Doom Wheel. The two, a, a Doom <laughs> Wheel and three more Storm Vermin. Yep. Or Storm Fiends. <laughs> so I, I'd hate to see the exact same, you know, handful of seven plastic kits that Skaven have yeah. remixed into another, another yep. box set. Same. I've had enough of those. Yep. So I can only get so many storm fiends. The optimist in me believes Cities of Sigmar will get their own starter box, like Slaves did, like Black Templar did, like or Lizards, that like just Lizards came out. did, like like Votan did, like where they get their own starter box to kick it off, and then more kits follow. Okay. And so, if they're going to eat up the Age of Sigmar preview on Saturday, I think you're right. We'll see closer to that. Mm-hmm. If they are not the Age of Sigmar proper. Reveal on Saturday, we may get a bunch of Skaven stuff, which which would be spectacular. And super weird. And super weird. Yeah, because it's like, their book came out a few months ago. Where were they then? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, we'll see. But I mean, all the AOS books are pretty much out, yeah. right? Yeah, we're pretty much done. So There's like one fact, it's Flesh Eater Ports to go. That's it. Yeah, and so, um, and so you're, yeah. Mm, so, yeah. And that I don't think there's another AOS. Oh, one. don't waste it on Flesh Eater Court book. Yeah, please. If the oh. AOS reveal is just like a model in a Flesh Eater Court book, <sighs> that'd be sad. I'd be so disappointed. That means that. Skaven would be the War Cry or something. Yeah. thing. But again, I'm okay with War Cry because if it's a new, because it could be ten models or something. Yeah, it'd be fine. Would be cool if it was like ten models and a weapon team. Oh, you know cool. what I mean? Like yeah. ten, ten new clan rats, and then here's your. If it's a War Cry. Yeah. Two faction box set, fine. Yep. If one of them was Skaven, because then would it'd be super cool if like the next season wasn't out in the wilds anymore. Now it's like in the cities, and the new terrain is like intact buildings inside. That'd of, be sweet. Instead of like Hammerhall, yeah. yeah, I would be down for that. But human sized building, not yeah. not these grand right. stormcast size. Exactly. Yeah, because it takes place actually in the city. Yeah, in a, in a Sigmarized medieval looking. Yeah, yeah, super cool. I'd, I'd be down for that. That'd be sweet. That, okay. And that would make, in my opinion, the Warcry preview the coolest one if mm-hmm. that's what it was. Yeah, could be wrong. Got to scale our expectations back. We have to remember there have been preview events like this wasted on all crystals. Right. So, what do we think it's it's going to be there? Scale back. Um, all five. It's going to be uh, one hero. One hero. There's going to be a new Praetor for Horus Heresy. Yep, generic. There's going to be a Flesh Eater Court book plus one hero for AOS. Yep. Uh, Underworlds, we're going to see... One new warband. One new warband in a new box. And yep. it's going to look just like models that already are out there. Yep. <laughs> so it'll be Iron Jaws or yep. whatever. Yeah. Yep. We're going to see... Um, for Warcry, we're going to see, like, another... It, it's... Oh, it's going to be like another Chaos Warband of just, like, generic chaos dudes, Ten Chaos dudes. Because yeah. we already have... Uh, oh, no, it might be, it'll be like Slanesh worshipping mortals. 
for we don't really have those we, have, we haven't gotten that before. Uh, and then for let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then old, uh, world. old world is literally just gonna be uh, a tomb king or a, a tomb king deck. hero. It's a, it's a tomb king resin hero, hero <laughs> resin hero, just like the paladin and that's repainted it. crap. Yep. That's it. Yep, that's it. Yep, it'll be just be it'll be uh, fourteen total models. Yep, that's it. In a book, it'll be thirty-five minutes long. Yep, to reveal five new characters and one unit for Eddie and what's his name to talk about them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really funny. Submit your guest, folks. Yeah. Right. What do you think will happen? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> do you like? Our, I mean, do you like our optimistic yeah. wish listing, or do you think our our low bar that we uh, always do at these preview events is more accurate? Yeah, I mean, it's been kind of a, a mix. Um, it's been a little bit higher than our expectations the last few. The the big events, Adepticon yeah. and Wormerfest, both exceeded, yeah. like some of us, we, some of those we were scary correct mm-hmm. without information to base it on. And then, but they exceeded our expectations, I think. They were just better than what we had hoped. These little ones, though, you can never tell. Yeah. Especially if they're going to try to cram five of them into what's usually a 45-minute-ish. So, which which to me means that two or three of them are going to be, like, so small. It's going to be like, here's a sheet, or here's one one slide with, with a new hero. Let's move on. And talk a bunch about it. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be like that. Um, but I expect to hear more, more information about, um, like I said, the campaign for AOS. That's going to be four or five books long. Yeah, and with Jarrow's Handbook some, coming out. We haven't gotten even the first book yet. I think we saw a preview of the cover of the first book, but we haven't seen anything of it. There's a General's Handbook coming. Uh, that's pre-order tomorrow so, I, or next this weekend. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's quick, and and it's dropping right in the middle of all this 40K yeah. fracas. But uh, I, I know that the new rules for the new season is based around um, wizards, yep. small wizards. So uh, that we lose a lot of things like the champions. We lose a lot of things like the veterans, which I kind of feel like those things should be just wrapped into core. Which we could see, by the way. Could that could absolutely be in a data sheet. Because the new sheet. rules are in a generous handbook, aren't they? Some, sometimes. But they also come with a data sheet uh, online, a digital one, that, that makes changes to the core rules and the factions. So we could see those kinds of detachments or those kinds of abilities be wrapped into the core rules if they think it's necessary. I do. I think foot guys being able to fight in multiple ranks is very handy and very it's healthy for the game. Especially when coherency in, in AOS is so tight, you have to be within one inch of two members of your unit if you have six or more models or more, or six or more models, and so it's like you're dis you're you're you have no incentive for some units of like big base guys to be taken in bigger units than five because it's you lose so much efficiency and so much effectiveness by having like it's just extra rooms up. then yeah yeah and so. I could see those kinds of rules being rolled into the into the game. I hope they do because I think they were positive. Uh, not be able to target foot heroes when they're near their units. Not not being having to worry about ranking up. I think it's all healthy. Well, we have observed, and this may just be speculation. Someone might have real data on it. That a lot of stuff in Age of Sigmar has been a test bed. Sure. For for ideas that they then put across their games, especially will carry over to 40k if it's a good one. 40k going to this seemingly more digital and card reference format, uh, we'll see once the codexes start rolling out, I guess. But that seems to be ahead of what they're doing in Age of Sigmar. Yeah. Age of Sigmar, they're still with the old-fashioned battle tome, and and that has, in our opinion at least, or I think we're in agreement here, sort of affected the release schedule in a way that they were so behind on production elsewhere that Age of Sigmar didn't get a whole lot model-wise, yeah. except for these once-a-year periodic huge releases like Seraphon or Slaves. Yeah. But, Seraphon um, was, a, was a, an entire line refresh. It was. Uh, they haven't done something like that in a while. Yeah. And um, and so, but what I wonder with Age of Sigmar is like the General's Handbook format and the way they do these seasons for it, I feel like it's it's being handled fantastic mm-hmm. on the AOS side. Uh, 40K one, so in ninth at least, it usually comes with grumbles. And, and so I wonder if you make the addition living... Mm-hmm. And so we were talking about Flesh Eater Courts is the, really the only book left, and yep. we don't see on the calendar what else they're doing. There's AOS slots on there, but we don't know what they mean. And so, like, what if they did revisit Skaven and mm-hmm. were like... Like right away? Here's a bunch of models, and so we need to update their rules, but we'll just give you the, the download one or something. Um, like, so they go, they reverse track here and take something from 40K and say, we'll give you a digital way to get the rules. But then Age of Sigmar might bring forth the idea of we don't need a whole edition change... Once a year, we can do this massive update. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the death of editions. 
Yeah. You know, where it's like, well, with a living document, we, we can make these changes gradually or periodically. And then and they can be impactful become, enough to make it yeah, feel like a fresh game. Exactly. Um, and when you're balancing regularly, which they're trying, mm-hmm. they really are, um, it does revitalize the meta. Yeah. And, and we have seen over and over again with AOS 3, which I think is still their best core cool rule set um, for a larger game. It's It's been very diverse in terms of what's winning. Mm-hmm. Now, we're seeing some numbers recently by, by a not GW source. It's not their right. meta watch. It's it's how Wohammer does their thing, um, where it looks like there's two kind of hanging out at the top that are maybe starting to skew a bit in their win column. But even that can be remedied really fast. But, but we also don't know like what the context for that is. Is it just at tournaments? Right. You know, like, are competitive lists for these two armies just that much better? Or is it the army, you know, the faction in general? We don't, we don't yeah, know. Or are they you know? running up against a lot of the same thing and they're really good in that match? Right. And, um, it's, it's, it needs more context to, to fully understand. It does. And we, yeah. haven't, we haven't seen a meta watch from GW for a little bit yeah. for AOS. Um, so we might get that soon. And it might look a little different yeah. based on that. Uh, but the, and, and this change to going away from the veterans and the whatever and moving to this wizards thing, that could change the results. Right. Because most wizards, because now you said small, is it is it specifying ones nine on foot moon, or nine wounds or less? Nine I, wounds I or don't less. remember okay. if it, if they can have a mount or not. I think Got they it. can still have a mount, but they, it's it's limiting how big you're allowed to be. You know, to benefit from to it. To benefit from it. Yeah, yeah. and that can uh, make a difference. I mean, and they've also been balancing just taking power out of the universal things as well, which I think is nice because there's too many times when a, a, a thing that anyone can take, certain armies can benefit from more. Yep. Right? So, like, universal uh, uh, spells, for example, the, the living spells, endless spells, or um, the universal artifacts, they, yep. they've really toned a lot of those down so they aren't just, like, the best choice when it comes to, like, choosing right. those. You don't see uh, 120 lists show up to an event and 89 of them have cogs. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. Which you won't anymore. Yeah. I had seen some leaks. Um, some leaks about cogs, some leaks about uh, Lauchen, the the, the, the ghost boatman. Right. Um, some leaks about um, universal spells, kind of. So, essentially, the big changes are that uh, they did uh, the, the, the tome last update, too. The, um, the spell tome that is a universal artifact. Now the only spell you can cast with that is Arcane Shield, Mystic, or Mystic Shield, Arcane Bolt. You can't use it to cast literally another spell from your... Spell right. Room. You can cast those two spells as an extra one. That's fine. You don't get to choose one. And if you become a wizard, those are the only two spells you have available. Mm-hmm. You don't get to then choose from your lore. Which people were probably planning yeah, to explore, were. yeah. Uh, and then you had Louch and the, the, the boatman was escorting, like, short-range monsters across the board. And then they could do the thing. One of the biggest offenders was Thankful and Bone Ripper with, okay. his, with his four flamethrowers. Yeah. You could just, like, teleport, be outside of nine, and then just, like, flame a unit to death and just instantly kill it. Uh, so that's that's dead, I think. Uh, and then Cogs was the same kind of wording where, like, if you gain a new spell, to, if you slow down time to, to cast another spell, it can only be one of the universal spells. It can't be one of your normal. So, so Nagash now can't take Cogs and just gain a ninth spell per turn. Yep. Kind of thing. Well, and I was thinking more of, like, how Cogs was in second, um, yeah. where everybody took it because it was just this big bonus to move. Yeah, so like a um, plus two charge or something yeah. crazy, like that board wide. And um, But what you're describing, it's great. There, there will be a... F- you know, eight people that are angry that they can't cheat to get extra spells now. Yeah. But it sounds like that's most of the common exploits among, I mean, except for armies like Caradrons, yeah. which don't really have a, a spellcaster. But se. you could get a spellcaster if you use that artifact. Yep. And so that's just it, is people mm-hmm. were finding these ways to get extra spells in their army and then just choosing the best one and casting it twice in a turn or whatever, or, yeah. or giving it to a guy who's not supposed to have it. Yeah. And uh, I'm totally fine for them cutting out ways for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're going to get a freebie, you're going to cast the most basic thing you can. Exactly. <laughs> it's still useful. It is. Like, plus one to saves is still yep. a useful ability. But you can't, like, cast a teleport ability on a guy who's not supposed to have it. Yep. Or have a fighty guy who's got a, pop, a pile of attacks and then be able to use ignite weapons to get plus one damage on all of his weapons, mm-hmm. all of his weapon attacks, and still be a, as fight, even more efficient as a fighter than he was before. Like, that kind of thing is, is going mm. to be toned back. So. So, uh, on a meta talk, shift in a bit here, uh-huh. we, we see 
that, that Wohammer's claims were that Caradron Overlords and Soul Black Grave Lords yeah. were the two winningest in that 60 percentage range, and maybe they're accurate based on whatever they showed all the day, tournaments they were pulling it from. Mm -hmm. But again, they have this weird like triple bar graph, and so I don't know exactly what they're deciding there. But what about those two armies? Would you say makes them that way? So I don't understand what. Because the Soul Blight one, I don't get that. They were a late bloomer ish. They got, I mean, they got most of their their power stripped away in their most recent book. A lot of like the the things you could exploit, mostly like the Vrykos Legion. Um, a lot of their, their their really powerful abilities got taken away. Um, so I don't know. That one I, is a mystery to me. There's got to be a build that's just why cranking. they're why they're doing so well. Um, but Caradrons, I mean, again, some armies just can't really fight the Caradrons. Because, Still, because yeah. they just they are they are so shooty. There is ways once per game to like retreat and fly away and then land and still shoot and all this and so like that can catch people off. Yep. You know you you massively miss you know uh, position yourself because you're going after that boat and it takes away and lands the other side of the board. Now your unit is stranded in nowhere. Yeah, you, you know? just wasted a whole bunch of movement. And, right. Yeah. So like I could see that kind of thing um, being a problem for some armies. And then we saw the two newest chaos factions, um, Heat Knights and Blades, are are close behind. Yeah, they're in they're in a in a, an acceptable win rate at yeah. like that fifty seven fifty eight. I think they are both also very solid. Yeah, they have speed. They've got they've got punch now. Their army rules are great. Yeah, I, I like both of those factions as well. And you think they'd be now? We we have thought that those two would be okay against the Caradrons, right? And so I still think that. <laughs> and if Caradron's got a nerf, whatever that may be, if they even need one, mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a situation where Heated Knights and Blades would suddenly dominate the game. Yeah, I don't think they'd run away with it. I think no. more factions would be able to compete better with those two. Than, with those yeah, two than with than a gun army, right? Yeah, and then the Soul Blades were just not sure why they're winning. Uh, yeah, so I know, you look into that. I, they I could be very popular too. It could be that. Yeah, um, I don't get it. I mean, most of most most of yeah, most instead. legions for um, for Soul Blade are like mid. Like they're they're all very good now. They're all kind of balanced against one another, mm. which is which is very good. I think maybe the the blood, not the Legion of Blood, um, the Dragon Legion. What's that one called? The Blood Knights. The Blood Knights one, like that that sub faction. I think is very solid. I, I don't. I think may, maybe that's the one that's doing all the winning okay. now because they are they are very good too. Yeah, um, a lot of it looked okay. There there were still a handful of stragglers down yeah. below that forty five. Um, but not as much down there. It was just I was surprised to see two of them kind of spike. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I don't know what they base their data on exactly. Uh, they open with a disclaimer that we calculate this differently than, right, exactly. than everybody else. Uh, so, yeah, it could even be they're factoring in um, specific matchups or or what. Number of 5-0s. Like, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. we, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know yep. what their, like, their metric is for, for their percentages. Right. So, like, number of top 8s. Like, I have yep. no idea, you know? If that's the case, and it's like, okay, a 64% isn't that crazy, then if it's number of top eights. Right. Or, you know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, because we don't know if that was tournament wins. Right. Because we've seen tournament after tournament come in, and, and I don't see them and Caradrons winning everything. Right. It, is, it is a very diverse top eight in yeah. every single one of them. Yeah, I think most armies have some good game. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully, the Age of Sigmar preview... Yeah. If it's a Cities of Sigmar box set, fine. Whatever. It, That's fine. If it includes Cities of Sigmar at all, I'm satisfied. But if it's not that. <laughs> if it's just if it's just here on a book, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Yep. <laughs> I'm be so sad. But I'm I'm worried that it is. But wait, I, wait, in our low expectation one, you didn't even include Skaven. You somehow didn't even I mention know. them. <laughs> but we've seen their symbol. Because isn't that so Skaven? That would be so. There's stable. a threat that they're always lurking, and they're always there, and yet they just don't show Never up when they're supposed up. to. Yeah, that'd be so perfect. I've been saying that a lot about um, the new Lord of the Rings set for Magic: The Gathering, and uh, a, lot, a lot of talk about the the One Ring, and how it hasn't showed up yet. Right. How it's like, oh, there's someone's kid's going to get it, and they're not going to know what it is. And uh, my wife made a really good point that it's but, like, but, but look at the people who play Magic, and look at look at kids, right, who who collect card games. They know. Kids, no. Yeah. Like, if some kid saw the One Ring fancy card, he is going to know. Right. Like, it, come it's, on. it's not a four-year-old right. being handed this as a gift from their dad. Because if, exactly. if the parents know about it, right. then they'll know. Plus, you think the parents are going to be like, willy-nilly, here's a $200 Lord of the Rings Magic, Magic the Gathering box set. Right. Because it's going to be expensive. Correct. You don't just buy that on a whim. Nope. 
You know, if it's like a starter, only if it's a the starter deck for right? twenty bucks, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so they're not giving it to a kid who's not going to know. Yeah, Kids. But, but it's funny because all the speculations be like, well, someone's going to get it and it's just going to disappear, and then it's like, oh, how it's so like the One Ring. You know, uh, you yeah. know, it's like where it's gonna it's gonna end up getting destroyed, and it's gonna go through the washing machine. It's like, oh, that's such like the every For single two time. and a half thousand yeah. years yeah. it passed out of all knowledge. So yeah. it's funny because like every time anyone has any speculation at all, that's always my response, and it, and it always works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like no matter what happens, it's like, oh, classic one ring. Yep. You know, <laughs> to think that it would be found by the type of people who eat seven meals a day. Yeah. You know, I've only had six today, though. I could go for one. Go for some? All right, let's see. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Check out our new episodes every Friday at Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible, or on Podbean. You can also follow myself and Llama on Instagram for more. We are at Hyena Paints Minis and at Llama Paints Minis. Music provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And as always, we'll catch you next time.